what? Recording? Oh, all right. Hey, sorry. Um, we are getting close to the end. We're doing a little more coding practice here today. Today, we are going to learn how to use one of these guys. Uh, it's called a potentiometer, which is a huge, long word. That's way out of focus. So maybe you can see it there. It's on the back. And what it does is it's like a dial. So if you think of like a volume knob that goes from zero and then it goes to 10, which is like as loud as it would get, that's what this thing does right here. Uh, to fasten it down, it's got a couple openings. You can kind of adjust it. Uh, put it wherever you want. I left the line tracker on here. You don't really have to have that on there. Uh, but give yourself some room so that you can use a small little axle and a gear to push that through the top. So now you can rotate it like it is um, a dial. It should not go all the way around. This is a very sensitive sensor. Uh, if you turn it too far, it's going to break all the stuff on the inside and it won't work. So you should be able to turn it to the left and it stops. Turn it to the right and it will stop. Okay. Uh, this is an analog sensor too. So when I fasten this to my base plate, I'm going to take the cord, follow it all the way around. And this goes into analog number two. Okay. So again, if you look at the, the little words down here, you're going to have to see this on your own because it's too small a print. One says digital, one says analog. This is going to be an analog number two. Analog one was a line tracker. Potentiometer plugs into analog two. So fasten that down, plug it in, and then get some sort of little gear so it will let you turn the mechanism inside that. Okay. This is not a motor. It doesn't move anything. It just records how much it turns. Okay. All right. Let's go over to Robot C and figure out how to program this thing. Again, start it up. I'm going to open a new page. I check my settings just in case I'm on a different laptop. 2.0 Cortex, natural language, USB only. I go to view, which is the next word at the top. I look at my preferences and make sure there's no auto file save. Good? I'm good. Okay. I've been coding for a couple years already and I still check that whenever I log in because sometimes you don't know. Uh, the program might update uh, and then you would have to redo all your settings again before you can use it. All right? Okay. Motor and sensor setup. Click that tab. I'm going to hook up my motor first. It is still in the same place it's always been, which is port 2. Uh, we've always been calling it right motor. No need to change now, so I'm calling it a right motor. My drop down, it's a VEX 393. I apply. And then the next tab over is analog sensors. I plugged into IN2. It is called a potentiometer. You do need to try to spell this as best you can. Potentiometer. And if I go over here to the drop down menu, Hey, it even says potentiometer. Look at that. Okay. Apply. Click OK. And you'll notice at the top it does say IN2 potentiometer motor port 2 right motor. Okay. Now, what do I want to have happen? I want to program it so that if I turn it one way, the motor starts. And if I turn it the other way, the motor stops. Okay, so if I turn it greater than a certain point, it's going to start the motor. If I turn it back less than a certain point, it's going to stop the motor. And those are actually the commands I'm going to use. So I go to natural language. I go down to until. Whenever I use a sensor, I'm always on my until commands. Uh, and it says until potentiometer greater than and until potentiometer less than. Okay, and again, look at that range is the same as what you had for the line tracker. It's 0 to 4,095. So I'm going to start with, at one point, it's going to be greater than. And then later on in my program, I want it to be less than. Okay. And this is my starting point. What do I want to have happen when it's greater than something? I'm going to click the plus sign by movement. Find my start motor command and drag that over to line 8. So when the potentiometer gets greater than something, it's going to start a motor. When it gets less than something, it's going to stop the motor. Okay. All right. Let's fill in all the uh, wording between the parentheses. This is where I get my keyboard ready. Uh, potentiometer greater than. So if it goes from 0 to 4,000, 
I'm going to put a number like uh, 3,000. So of all the places it can be, I have to turn it till it reads greater than 3,000. Um, this will make sense once we download it to robot, and at the bottom you're going to see uh, the sensor readings too. Okay, sensor port, where is it plugged in? Up here I can see IN2, or if you love typing, type in potentiometer. I myself, I'm going to type in IN2. Motor port, we've done this many times, it's port 2. And the speed, uh, let's go for a clean 111. Okay until the potentiometer less than. I'm going to pick a different number. I don't want it to be 3000 or any little bump of the dial of the potentiometer could actually change my value and go on to the next line. So let's go down to like 1000. Okay. Then there's going to be no mistaking that I purposely turned it less than that number to make it work. Sensor port is still the same as above IN2. Okay. Which motor do I stop? I'm going to stop port 2. And that looks to be my code. Okay, click compile. Nothing shows up in this bottom uh, frame of my window, so my code is good, and it is orange cord time. Okay, so I get my orange cord uh, here. I happen to have it plugged in from the last time yet, so I always plug it into your Cortex first. Go around, plug it into the USB port of your computer. And then, you know, the step to get everything right is to turn the on-off switch on your Cortex. Okay. So I still have everything plugged in. I'm good to go. And I am going to download to robot. Okay. And I'll just make this screen a little bigger. So now, when I turn this dial, the number down here should change. It says 2900 now. How do I get these values down here at the bottom? I did this in the line tracker video too, and if you didn't see it or didn't catch it, I would go under the command robot at the top, down to debugger window, and then I would click on the sensors. Okay, so if I took it off, it goes away. I have to do this after I click download to robot. So I get my little pop-up screen here, and then before I start, again, it's robot, debugger window, sensors okay so watch this number down here as I go over and turn the potentiometer on my little work bed here okay so it goes to 4,000 turn it the other way and it goes down 13 200 okay so as I turn this the number on my screen changes all right fingers crossed let's see if this works start green line tells me it's waiting for the command on line 7 before it can start a motor so I'm going to turn the potentiometer see if it gets past 3000 it worked it started now I have to turn the potentiometer the other way and it stops okay again I click the start button I turn it to the right turn it greater than 3000 turn it back the other way Huh. One last thing. Wouldn't it be really nice if I did not have to come in and press this start button all the time? What if I could just loop this over and over and over, and then whatever I felt like turning it one way, it would go on, and it goes off when I turn it the other way. Let me show you what to do with that. This is super easy. Okay. We're back in robot C mode. I have to put a new line in here um, before these curly brackets. So I'm going to go up. I'm going to go to line 6, I'm going to click enter, press my enter button, and then go back up to line 6. The command I'm going to do is called an open loop or a while command, and I'm going to type in the word while, and then in parentheses, it's going to be 1 equals equals 1, end parentheses, okay? Um, what this says is while one is equal to and only equal to one, run the program in those parentheses. Okay? To make this work, there's one last step that's very important. I have to put extra sets of curly brackets um, in my whole program. So before while, I'm going to put a left curly bracket. Then I'm going to go down to line 15. I'm going to press enter. And another curly bracket 
Okay, so I have a little program inside a program. Five task main will run everything below it. While with its curly bracket and the ending curly bracket are its own program. And then the inner sets of curly brackets will keep running this over and over. Confusing? It works. Okay, so here's your code. Compile. No errors down here at the bottom. I'm going to run it. Download to robot. Bring this up. Okay. Now let's see if I can make this work. Huh. Okay. All right. Temp geometer is at 450, so it should not start right away. I'm going to turn it one way. Get above 3,000. Turn it back till it's less than 1,000. And notice the green arrow still appears on line 9. So it's looping itself. Go above. Go below. Go above. Go below. The possibilities for fun are endless. So there you go. Try to code the potentiometer and then uh, loop it. Add this while command and an extra set of brackets and you should be good to go. All right. Happy coding. Good luck.